Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're going to cover resting heart rate. We're going to talk about what's a good resting heart rate value based on some normative data. And then we're going to talk about some of the physiology and why our resting heart rate actually goes down as we become more and more fit. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about some data that I pulled from different research studies, which are in the description below, as well as from the Essentials of Strength Training and Conditioning book, page 125. So to start off, as we become more and more fit, especially from aerobic endurance training, we need to deliver less blood per minute for our muscles and our body to actually function. So the amount of blood that we deliver per minute is called our cardiac output. And if we think back to the equation for cardiac output, that's stroke volume times heart rate. So our resting cardiac output would be our resting heart rate times our stroke volume, which is how much blood we're pumping per beat. So as we become more and more fit, we need less of a cardiac output at rest. So to put some numbers to that, untrained individuals after bed rest may have a cardiac output around 5.7 liters per minute. After training, a training intervention, that might go down to around 4.4 liters per minute. And then elite athletes can have a cardiac output around 4.2 liters per minute. So as you can see, we need to deliver less blood the more fit we are. This is driven by two things, a decreased resting heart rate and an increased resting stroke volume. The resting stroke volume increases because our heart gets bigger as we do aerobic training and exercise. And to give you some numbers for that, untrained individuals may have a heart volume around 860 milliliters, whereas elite endurance athletes may have a heart volume around 940 milliliters. So that bigger heart chamber size can help them pump more blood per beat and therefore need less heartbeats at rest to pump the same amount of blood. Now you may be wondering if this changes with age, if you're young, if you're old. After around age 18, our resting heart rate stabilizes. So a fit person in their 20s and a fit person in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and even 60s tends to have about the same resting heart rate. Maximal heart rate, however, does tend to decrease with age. So someone in their 20s may have a max heart rate around 200, whereas someone in their 50s, 60s may have a max heart rate around 160, 170 beats per minute. And in terms of youth, Babies actually tend to have a really high resting heart rate, 100 plus beats per minute, but then by age 18 it stabilizes and usually stays about the same and then really just changes with things like fitness, training, hydration, stress, sleep, and other factors like that throughout your lifetime. All right, so now let's look at the actual normative data here. This is from a research study on about 100,000 people and what it showed is that in general, women tend to have a slightly higher resting heart rate than men. This is due to women having a just slightly lower heart volume than men. And what you can also see is that there's a pretty big distribution of resting heart rates, all the way from as low as around 40 in this study, up to over 100 beats per minute. And what you'll see is that average resting heart rate falls anywhere from around 65 to about 68 beats per minute. Now, athletes can actually have a significantly lower resting heart rate than these normative data. Uh, Ronaldo's resting heart rate is reportedly around 32 to 34 beats per minute. The average Tour de France cyclist heart rate is around 40 beats per minute. And then the record for lowest heart rate is actually 27 beats per minute. Most good endurance athletes can expect to be in the 40s to 50s. And it probably comes down to some genetics to actually get below 40 beats per minute. But if you're wondering if you fall into the top 10 percentile or even the top 1 percentile, I actually pulled up this chart for you. So what you can see here is that the top 10 percentile of men is below 55 beats per minute. The top 10 percentile for women is below 59 beats per minute. And then to get all the way into the first percentile, men would have to be around 46 beats per minute, women around 51 beats per minute. So if you're up there or if you just want to let me know your resting heart rate, comment it below and uh, I'll give you a thumbs up if you're in that 40s, 50s range. That's really impressive. Um, importantly, don't check it just once. So if you just checked it before this video or if you're after this video going to check your heart rate just once, know that it can change up to 10 beats per minute within one week. Uh, that depends on sleep, hydration, training status. Uh, for example, I just went for a run this morning. So my resting heart rate is actually going to be elevated until I return back to a baseline metabolic rate. Um, so take a few hours after your workout, uh, ideally doing this in the morning. Um, with good hydration as well. As you become dehydrated, your body has to pump more blood to deliver the same amount of oxygen. So for that reason, you want to be hydrated when you are checking your resting heart rate. And also stress can be a factor. Catecholamines are present in stressful situations. Uh, they actually elevate the heart rate. Things like beta blockers, which would be for high blood pressure, may actually decrease your heart rate. So there are a lot of factors to this, and the best way to do it is actually probably to check in the morning or to wear a fitness tracking watch that's going to track your resting heart rate uh, multiple times throughout the day for multiple weeks to actually see that. 
And if you're doing interval training or endurance training, you can actually expect to see and track that change in your resting heart rate over the course of weeks and months and see how your fitness is improving. And it could be a good indication that your heart's getting bigger, that you're pumping blood more efficiently, um, and that you're becoming a better aerobic endurance athlete. All right, guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, smash that like button, subscribe for more videos like this, comment below if you have any questions, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.